I want you to open your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Let's go over there right now. And we've been talking about being the difference between being under the law and under grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Everybody say, Sin, sin. shall not. Have dominion, have dominion over me. Over me. Why? Because you are not under the law, but under grace. That is an incredibly powerful scripture that we always love to use the second half of it. The second half says, Brother Steve, I'm not under the law, but under grace. And again, I don't have time to go back over the whole element of what we did. I want to talk some this week about grace and the working and the power of grace. But I'm going to drop this bomb in your spirit once again. You are not required to obey the regulations of the law, but you are required to submit to the revelation of the law. I'm going to say that, listen, that statement will break loose on the inside of you. You need to get a hold of it because Jesus didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill it. You're not required to be obey the regulations of the law, but we absolutely are under the revelation of the law. And he says, under grace, every say under grace, grace, we are free from the power of sin. We are free. The Bible says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. So how does this process work, the difference between being under the law and under grace? You know, there's a lot of people out there teaching on grace today, and frankly, I think a lot of it borders on heresy. Oh, I can feel I'm in a mood tonight. You know why? Because they're not teaching the grace of God. They're teaching, um, they're, trying to, <laughs> they're trying to teach being free from a religious spirit by getting you to be bound to a religious spirit. Because a religious spirit has two faces. It's a two-faced devil. The one face is the face of legalism. And legalism is the needing to obey a particular set of rules of a moral mode of conduct or moral conduct in order to get favor with God. Yep. That's legalism. Yep. But there's another face to a religious spirit, and that is lawlessness. I was in a church. I would, if I mentioned the person's name, you would all know the name. In a church uh, in California. And I was there, and I did not know that there was a lot of immorality going on behind the scenes. But I had a vision, a full-blown open vision. I was in the, this church had a couple side wings, and I was one of the side wings, and it was during worship. And all of a sudden, during worship, I had this open vision, and I saw this pastor standing on the platform preaching. And there was an incredible, like, glory of God over top the crowd. The place was completely packed out. And then I could see out the back door, and as far as the eye could see, I could see thousands of people marching into this church. Now, underneath the crowd, the first 40% of the people had a very a four to six foot stone foundation that was underneath them. But the last 60% of the people, it was paper thin, and there were holes all over the place. Never did it get you know, thicker than this, the foundation, and generally it was holes all over the place. Underneath... This church, while the glory of God was over top, was a huge, gigantic, probably 100 foot tall religious spirit. And I'm watching, I'm seeing this open vision like I'm looking at you. This is what I'm seeing. Now, how many of you know that's a little disconcerting when you're in the middle of worship? Are you all with me on this, okay? This is not some fantasy in my mind. I'm sitting there worshiping like... I'm seeing this picture, and this religious spirit is opening its mouth, and as it's speaking, a black film is coming up out of its mouth. Now, it can't go through the 40% that had the stone foundation. It couldn't get through them. They had enough of the revelation of the word that what this religious spirit was saying couldn't impact them. Are you all hearing me? But it would go up through the holes in the back 60%. It would go up and it would wrap itself around the eyes and the head of the people in the back 60%. And as soon as it did, they lifted their hands and began to shout, Hallelujah, 
I'm free. And what this religious spirit was doing was it was calling the spirit of holiness religious. Let me say that again. What this religious spirit was doing was calling the spirit of holiness religious. See, the Bible said and says that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. What I did not know at the time was behind the scenes there was tremendous amount of immorality going on. The preacher's wife, who I came to know personally later on, my wife and I did, told me that there was a lot of drinking and a lot of R-rated movies and a lot of language going on behind the scenes. And she was raised in church where that stuff just wasn't done by normal Christians. And so she sat there and she, she would bring it up and she said, well, you know, isn't this stuff wrong? And he would accuse her of being religious. Hello. And anybody that would start preaching, live a separated, consecrated life, was labeled as religious. We're free, we're free, brother Steve. We're under grace. So what in the world does this thing mean, being under grace? If you ask most people to really define it, they basically will define it as this. If I'm under grace, I am no longer held accountable for the sins that I have committed. That's the concept. Don't tell me to live a certain way, Brother Steve, because we're not under the law. We're under grace. grace. They believe it to be a, fa a lack of judgment for actions that are done. But I've got news for you. That's not what grace is and it's not what grace means. That's mercy. Mercy is when you have done wrong and you're no longer, you're not held accountable for your wrong. People don't throw themselves on the grace of the court. They throw themselves on the mercy of the court. All right? So that's mercy. And thank God for his mercy. His mercy endures forever. I don't know about y'all, but I'm very happy about that. Somebody say, I need some mercy. I need some mercy. Turn to your neighbor saying, you really need some mercy. <laughs> All right. But that's not grace. That's not grace. And I got bad news for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, here it comes. <laughs> You're not saved by mercy. You're saved by grace. So I want us to go. To, we're going to jump totally out of the line of where I was going to hear. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 2. And we're going to begin to chip away at this thing in a powerful way. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. But under grace, the Bible says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. So under grace, you have power to not sin. Grace is not freedom from, from uh, judgment. I just put judge. Grace is access to power so you don't sin. Wow. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's throw it up. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Next verse. As his divine power has given unto us all things. Everybody say all things. Should he say all things? Say one more time, all things. All things, that means all things mean all things. All things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything you need to live godly has been given to us by grace. 
Because grace, everybody say this after me. I want you to get it in your spirit. Even those of you that heard me teach this before. I'm going to go someplace we haven't gone yet. But I got to put this in your spirit. Grace is the favor of God. Everybody say it's the favor of God. That gives me access to the power of God for everything I need for life and godliness. Everything you need for life and godliness is given to you by grace because grace is favor that gives you access to power. Uh, let me help you out here just a little bit. Just a little. Hi, how you doing? Good. What's your name? Heather. Hi, Heather. Uh, uh, do I know you? I don't think so. Okay, Heather. So I don't know Heather. And, and Heather, if I just decide all of a sudden to write out, and, and listen, grace is undeserved favor. You can't earn it. You can't pray enough for it. You can't be good enough for it. Come on. It's undeserved favor, but it is favor. And what is favor? Favor is nothing more and nothing less than access to power. I'm going to say that again. Favor is nothing more and nothing less than access to power. If you have favor with the banker, it means you have access to his power. He's going to use his power to do something for you. Come on, amen. amen. That's what favor is. We have favor with the president. You have access to power. And, and God says that Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. <laughs> and we need favor with God and man. Now, so Heather, right? Heather, okay. Heather, I don't know. But if I wrote to, to Heather and I wrote out a note and said, sign my name on it and said, I give the legal right for Heather to go use my Capital One visa. That means I don't have those mean guys chasing me. Okay, some of you will get that on the way home. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I got this Capital One visa, and I give her an, a, a, a note and says she can go and sign it, and she can go down and buy whatever she wants. I give her the legal right. How many of you know that is favor? She didn't earn it. She didn't deserve it. Are you all with me on this? She didn't earn it. She don't deserve it. Not that that is favor. To give her access to power. This is the power of money. How many of you know money does have some power? Yes, it does. Okay. In case you don't know, you can buy stuff with money. Okay. So <laughs> money has power. It's nothing compared to God's power, but it does have power. It's the power of the world. And so she has access to power. It doesn't really matter who she is as long as she, as long as they are comfortable with who I am and my ability to pay, they're not interested in her ability to pay. It ain't her card. It's my card. Yep. I have now given her access to my power. Yep. Come on, on y'all hearing me? Yes. And that is favor. Yeah. Yeah. Now she can go out and get something that she wants. Yep. Favor. Ever say Favor. favor. I'm not walking away. Trust me. I'm even, I'm, even, I'm even checking out to see if your eyes are memorizing that number down there. All right. This is an example. Just trust me. Ain't that much favor. All right. Example. Got to be careful nowadays. All of a sudden, I got charges on eBay. All right. So now she's got favor. She has favor that gives her access to power to get something she needs. That's what grace is. Now, the Bible says to go back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, because the Bible says grace and peace be, every say multiplied. multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. So it's not bad that she has one credit card, but what if I give her a second one? How about, how about, how about a third one? What, what about a, a fourth one and a, and a fifth one? And a, how many do I have, Lord Jesus? A sixth one, a seventh one, a... Eighth one, my goodness, you might be able to buy a tank of gas with that. <laughs> now she has multiplied favor. Huh? How many would like some multiplied favor? How many know that would be pretty cool if someone walked up and handed you all of this? Uh, don't be lying to me. Don't look spiritual. No, that's Brother Steve. I don't need it. You take it like that. Yes. You'd be like, thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, now, wouldn't you think that she was an absolute fool if she would run around the church saying, look at this, I got the power in the name of Jesus. Look at my face. 
favor and spends all day long dancing around the church, prancing around, talking to everybody about her favor, and yet never goes to the store and buys anything. Yeah. Come on. That's a good word. Huh? Yeah, sing all you want. You got favor, honey. Go buy something. Right? But that's what the church does. We sing about the promises of God. And it's almost, it's almost like she's sitting there just looking and saying, oh, you know, they're pretty cars and pretty. And I'm going to sit here and say, oh, yes, I, oh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Waiting for what? I'm just waiting for God to give it to me. He gave you the favor. He gave you grace. He gave you favor to access power. But you got to access the power. Maybe that's why the Bible says you have not because you Ask not, and then if you do ask, you're asking amiss. You're asking wrongly that you may squander it on your own selfish lust. Oh, someone say favor. All right. So grace and peace. Let's go back to that verse. Uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Second Peter chapter. Okay. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through. Here we say Through. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Next verse. Watch this. Oh, this is potent. By which he has given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Okay? He's given us these great promises. Oh, keep it up here. That through these, through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature. Look at me for a second. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody say partakers. partakers. Say it again. When I say look at me, switch that over. All right, there we go. Uh, look, 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 say partakers. Partakers, partakers of the divine. Wait, 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 wait. Remember what we were talking about? That the whole purpose of the law and grace was to get to God, access to God. Remember last week, access to God. Why? Because he is the divine God. He has the divine nature. And in order to walk free, in order to fulfill our destiny, we had to be able to, man had to come down here and we had to access the divine nature. We either did it through the, tried to do it through the law, but we were, it was powerless to do it because sin was blocking our way, right? We couldn't get free. Yet. So he, over here, he gave us grace. Everybody say grace. He gave us grace so we could get access through imputed righteousness. We could get access to the divine nature. Why? Because we need to access the divine nature in order to live a divine holy life. Yep, come on. Hallelujah. But now he says, go back to that verse, through these great and precious promises, we can right now, someone say right now. Right now. Not later when you die, right now, be partakers of the divine nature. And once we do that, watch the, uh-oh, uh-oh. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wait, 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 what did he just say? He said, you can access the divine nature of God here and now so that you can escape. Someone say escape. Escape, escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Romans chapter 6, verse 14 again. Let's, let's pull these together. I'm, going, I'm just warming up. I haven't even gotten into, into gear yet. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because I have given you grace that gives you access to the divine nature. Divine nature. And you can use that power of the divine nature to have once and for all overcome the power of sin in your life. Grace is much more powerful than we think. Grace is much more powerful than we think. Grace is not a get out of hell free card and grace is not a license to be free from the, the judgment of sin. Grace is access to the power to be free from the power of sin. Boy, it's a little heavy now. Yep. Huh? Come on, how do we do, how weak do you, that's what, how weak do you think the cross is? How weak do you think the blood of Jesus is? What did he mean when he said on the cross, it is finished? What it was he talking about? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Let's go there. Oh, my Father God. Shikarabha Sunday. Ha. 
Here it goes. He who sins is of the devil. <laughs> for the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose. Because of sin, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Turn that in the Amplified. Put that up. Go find it in the Amplified. Someone say, destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now watch this. Oh, this is good. He said, but he who commits sin, who practices evil doing is of the devil, takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was manifest, visible, was to undo destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil has done. Amen. Jesus didn't come just to get you forgiven. He came to get you free from the bondage of sin so you could live a righteous life. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it until I, I, I hear me. He didn't come simply to get you forgiven. He came Can I drop a bomb in you? Come on. If it was just about forgiveness, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, he had a temporary thing in place, the blood of animals that led to a temporary access to God. Yep. It wasn't just about forgiveness. It was about getting access back to God. It was about getting up free from the sin nature. It was about reversing what happened in the Garden of Eden. It was about dealing with the sin nature in, in man. Yes. Right. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Let's go there for a moment. Let's explore this. It's all right if I teach tonight. Yes. Thank you. Well, I was going to do it anyways. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says this. Can we put it up? Romans 5, verse 12. I'm, I know I'm throwing all kinds of curveballs at her. So, Romans 5. Therefore, just as through one man... Sin. Ever say sin. sin. That's talking about the sin nature. Not sins we commit, but the sin nature. Sin entered the world. And death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Because we were all born with a sin nature. Yep. Let's go on. Next verse. Therefore, until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Now, let me, let me, let me back uh, off here. The sin nature, that nature of rebellion, because the essence of sin is the rejection of God's legal right of authority over our lives. It is that thing inside of you that says, protect me, myself, I, I, me, me. That thing that's, you don't have to teach a child to say no. It's one of the first words they use, learn. Mama, Papa, no. And the fourth word is mine. I remember when Josiah and Benjamin were young. Josiah was two, learning to speak. Benjamin was four. Benjamin took a toy from Josiah. Josiah took the toy back and said, mine. And then went, bam. He took it by force. <laughs> but God gave the law which is holy to expose the sin to expose the sin the law did not have the power to deal with the problem of sin it only had the power to expose the sin and it still has the power today to expose sin because sin didn't change simply because Jesus died on the cross let me, Lord, help me. Because the law was never the problem. Sin was the problem. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. I'm going to take you along here. We're going to down a little journey. Are you all with me? Is this all right? All right, Romans chapter 7, verse 7, from the Amplified. We're going to do this from the Amplified. Romans 7, verse 7. What then do we conclude? Is the law identical with sin? Certainly not. Nevertheless, it would not have been for the, if it had not been for the law, I should not have recognized sin or had known its meaning. For instance, I would not have known about covetousness, 
would not have known that covet uh, uh, would have had no consciousness of sin or sense of guilt if the law had not repeatedly said, "You shall not covet and have an evil desire one thing or for one thing or another." Verse eight. But sin. Finding opportunity in the commandment to express itself got a hold of me and aroused and stimulated all kinds of forbidden desires, lust and covetousness. For without the law, sin is dead. The sense of it is inactive and a lifeless thing. Okay? He's sitting there saying, listen, God gave the law to expose the sin. Why? So that we could then understand our need to be delivered from the sin. Come on. Not just forgive it. Someone say delivered. Don't you think the blood is sufficient? Don't you think the blood is sufficient? Well, Brother Steve, I just don't know about this. As long as we're in the flesh, we're going to sin. All right, well, what are you doing in the flesh? It said sin shall not be your master. You, it shall not have dominion over you. That you should obey. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. We're gonna, I'm going to help you, okay? But we just got we to hit this thing. Because, see, we got to stop believing the lie. The lie that says, well, I'm just... See, that's a lie of this greasy, of this false grace message. The lie of the false grace message is that says, you know what? You're under grace, so it doesn't matter that you're still sinning. That's not the message of the gospel. That's not good news. I mean, it's, it's somewhat good news, but it's not really good news. The real good news is, hey, I came not only to forgive you, I came to set you free. Yep. I mean, is the word true or not? He who the Son sets free is free indeed. You ain't free indeed if you're only free from judgment but still bound by the bondage. Wow. Come on. Come on. Huh? You are free when that sin no longer controls you. When you no longer have to obey its dictates. <laughs> Turn and someone say, Jesus came to set me free. Say it again. Say, Jesus came to set me free. Jesus came to set me free. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, um, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. Let's begin with verse 5, just from the regular uh, New King James Version. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Everybody say the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Someone say spiritually minded. Hmm. Hmm. What does that mean? We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Help me, Father. Say spiritually minded. Because though the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law. What? Hold it, excuse me, hang on. I, wait, I gotta, wait, the carnal mind is an enemy of God. It's enmity against God. Why? For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can be. Why? It's a sin nature. It's not in submission to the law. The sign... <laughs> The sign that it's carnally minded is it has no ability to yield to the law. Not the regulation of the law, but the revelation of the law. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Okay, come on. I'm, I'm in trouble now. So, <laughs> verse, nine, verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So those who are, let's go back to verse 7. Go back to verse 7. Look at this and just walk with me on this a little bit because I'm in trouble, like beyond trouble. All right. That's what Tuesday nights are for. Tuesday nights for serious trouble. Okay. All right. Because the carnal mind is enmity with God. Everybody say the carnal mind is enmity with God. For why? For it is not subject. Say it again. It's not subject. It's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Verse 9, or verse 8. <laughs> Shh. 
So then, those who are in the flesh, who are carnally minded, who are controlled by this carnal mind, they are enemies of God. They are not subject to the law of God. And as a result, they do not please God. <sighs> Let's do uh, Romans 8 again, verse 7, on, in the Amplified. Let's do that in the Amplified, all right? That is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God, for it does not submit itself to God's law. Why in the world is he talking about submitting to God's law in the New Testament? He's saying the one, the mind, which does not submit to God's law is an enemy of God. Now remember, say this after me. I'm saved by grace. Saved by grace. I'm justified by faith. Justified by faith. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say I don't have to obey the, the, the uh, regulations of the law. But the revelation of the law. Revelation of the law. All right. <laughs> Verse 8. Verse in the Amplified. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to its appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. Oh, it doesn't matter, Brother Steve. You know, we're saved by grace, so it doesn't matter if I drink or smoke. It doesn't matter if I tell dirty jokes. Come on. It doesn't matter if I... If I, <laughs> it doesn't matter how I live. I am free. I am free, Brother Steve. I am free. No, you're not free. You're bound. When you're free, you no longer want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse, verse 9, watch this. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit if... The Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ, is not truly a child of God. But if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the Spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he will raise, then he who raised up Jesus, Christ Jesus from the dead, will also restore to, uh, restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The, verse 12, watch this. So then, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature to live a life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. We don't have to obey this thing anymore. Someone say, I don't have to obey it. Say it again. Say, I don't have to obey it. Say it again. I don't have to obey it. Now, verse 13 gets really heavy. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But, I uh, like, but if through the power, the access to the divine nature, the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually put into death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. So the power of the Holy Spirit has been given not so we can walk around going Oh, I feel it. Oh, I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. And I can just roll on the floor and do my Holy Ghost heebie-jeebies and have laughing fits for three hours and then still go out and live like the devil? I don't think so. The power of the Holy Spirit isn't so we can prop, walk around and see a few miracles and everybody can look at us as Steve Stunning or Susie's the Spectacular who does all these miracles. No, the power power of the Holy Spirit has been given so we can overcome the deeds of the flesh in our life once and for all. Yeah. Okay. I've got through my first verse. I got 12 pages to go. Now, 
Oh, my Father God. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 for a moment. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Oh, someone say, Jesus came to set me free from the power of sin. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Father, we give you praise. All right. I know this is like heavy, meaty stuff. You all with me on this? Is right? Yeah, come on. Okay. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, fleshy, carnal, doing what? Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> What's that word? Holy. Oh, there's that four-letter word again. Yeah. Holy. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Someone say holy. holy. <laughs> Acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Yep. Sure <clears throat> and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, golly, prove, through a life that looks like Jesus, that you may prove, that you may be a proof what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> that you may live a life that is so holy, that you may live a life that is so free from the influence of the world that you are the living proof of the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That when people look at you, how free you are from sin, not just the consequence of sin, but the nature of sin, you are a living proof of the finished work of Christ. Yep. Some would say renewed in my mind. Now, I want you to put this in your spirit that there are two elements to your mind. And both have to be renewed. And this will give you a little understanding why in some churches they may teach good amount of word, but they're not seeing the transformation. Because your mind is made up of two components. It is the natural component and it is the spirit component. Your mind is not just natural. Your mind is spirit. Let me say that again. Your mind is not just natural. Your mind is spirit. I'll prove it to you from Scripture. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse, let's do verse 23 first. And then we'll come back to a few other verses. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. Can we throw that up there? And be renewed. Where? Where? Now, Romans said be renewed, the renovation of your mind, the renewing of your mind, which means a renovation, the tearing down of the old and the building of the new. Now, here in Ephesians, he says be renewed in the... So don't just get renewed in the thinking, the natural process of your mind, but you also have to get renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, the spirit of your mind is where the devil talks to you. The spirit of your mind is where God talks to you. Someone say the spirit of my mind. It is that part that encompasses the totality. I, I want to I share with you an experience 
that was not godly. And I don't, I hesitate sharing this because I don't want to use this as a biblical proof. But for me, it just led confirmation to what I already see in the Word. When I was a heathen, and I was a good heathen, I was engaged in a lot of ungodly stuff. But I was always very sp sensitive to the spirit realm. And I had an experience one night. I had been engaging in some, dabbling in some black magic and other things and Ouija boards. I had been having encounters with demon spirits. I didn't know there were demons at the time. They were coming into my bedroom and sitting on my bed. I could feel the weight of a full person sitting on my legs. You could see the bed suddenly dip down. I, they, I would have aberrations would appear to me and multiple people around me saw them in my car at different times, in the back seat, in my bedroom. One night, I was half in that place, a little bit between dream and awake, and I felt this weird presence. I can't describe it, except it was my body began to tingle in a very kind of sickly way. And I... It bothered me, and all of a sudden, I just felt this evilness around. So I, it was dark, and I won't go turn the light on. So I get up to go turn the light on, and I walk over to the wall to hit the light switch, and I can't seem to feel it, and I can't seem to touch it. And it was almost like my wall, my hand was going into the wall. Well... I heard my brother coming out of the bathroom. Now, my door was here. There's a little tiny hallway. His door was here. My door was here. The bathroom was right here, a very small house, and a little hallway here. I went to open the door, and my hand went right through the door. Next thing I know, my body went right through the door. I literally saw the inside of the door, and next thing I know, I'm standing on the other side of the door. And there, I'm running into my brother. And he was walking past, and my leg passed through his leg. I watched it pass through his leg. And he stopped and turned around and looked at his leg. Then I proceeded forward, and I passed through two more walls. I came out to the main hallway and tried to turn on those light switches, and I watched my hand go through the wall. And all of a sudden, it hit me, and I said, wait a minute, if I was awake... I could do this. Next thing I know, I literally feel my body like, I feel like forces sh thrusting me. And next thing I know, boom, I'm in my bed and I feel like my spirit, now I'm not saying, is half floating out of my body. Now I asked my brother the next day, I told my brother about the experience, he flipped out because he felt he did literally come out of the bathroom. He did literally walk down the hallway, and he felt something go through his legs. He thought it was like the cat or something, the hair, because his whole leg tingled. He described it exactly where I saw my leg pass through him. You say, what did you have? I, I, you know, people talk about out-of-body experiences. I believe I had one. Now, here's the thing. I'm not trying to... Listen, listen. All these things about the, this demonic stuff, it's not just in minds. People do demonic things in the spirit. Come on, amen. I've been in the nations of the world, guys. I've been in the third world. The kind of stuff oh, demonic that goes on over there, I mean, people levitating, people going to even bodies morphing into animals and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's crazy. Okay, demonic as all get up. We, don't, we, 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 so, we so don't see much of that here in the United States, but it's around the world. The stories that I've heard and the things that I've seen. And I'm not trying to promote this as anything. It was demonic. It was demonic. It was demonic. For a day, I felt like my spirit wasn't, was hanging, hanging halfway out of my body, and I felt like there was something else in there. And so it was demonic. Y'all with me on that? The only reason I bring that up is this. And I, please, I, don't go freaky out on me. That was a, I, was, I was a heathen, and it was demonic. But I was fully aware of all my thoughts and memories. And the only thing that came out of that experience was this. Man. There's an element of your mind that travels with you in the spirit. There is a spirit of the mind. There is a spirit of the mind. 
the self-aware, when you talk about the prophets of God being caught away in the spirit, they were completely self-aware. Why? Because there's a spirit of your mind. Now, the only reason, again, the reason I bring that up is he said, not just, don't just be renewed in your natural mind, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's not enough just to get the information of the word. You got to get the spiritual revelation of the word. That's what's going to change you. That's what's going to transform you. There's people who can quote scriptures all day long. People, they tell me, oh, but that guy knows the word, knows the word. No, he has natural flooded with the information of the word, but he doesn't have the revelation of the word. Because when you have the revelation of the word, it transforms the spirit of your mind. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, or 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, sorry. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says this, grace and peace be multiplied. Everybody say multiplied. Through the knowledge of God. Through the knowledge of God. In some translations, it's in, but it also means through. You are, you are, the favor of God is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. How does this grace work? It works through the knowledge of God. Uh, I got to prove this to you. I got to prove this to you. Bible says you are saved by grace. Are you everybody with me on that? Okay, you're saved by grace. All right, let's go to Roman. Uh, Ephesians says you're saved by grace. How about Romans chapter 10? Verse, <laughs> verse beginning with uh, verse 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Everybody say saved by grace. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good news. But those, who, uh, verse 17, let's go there. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You are saved by grace through faith. The word comes, not just in the natural, as far as the information of salvation, but in the spirit, which is faith. Because faith is not a natural life force. Faith is a supernatural gift from God. And you are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves. Not only is the grace not of yourselves, but the faith is not of yourselves. The faith is that supernatural spirit revelation that comes in, that all of a sudden you see it when you didn't see it. And when those two come together, then you are able to respond to God. Are y'all hearing me? All of a sudden, there just came inside of you. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You weren't serving God. You maybe heard about Jesus. You maybe heard about getting right with God. But all of a sudden, one day, it bursted inside of you, and you knew that you knew that you knew that you needed to give your life to Jesus Christ. Some on the inside was bubbling. To, come on. The word broke loose. You might have heard a hundred messages and then finally one time when they spoke, it suddenly went deep on the inside of you. What happened? It penetrated the spirit of your mind. See, that's why God was talking, Paul was talking about trying to get the gospel to the unbelievers. He said, the God of this world, the devil, the spirit has blinded the minds. What part did he blind? He blinded the spirit part of their minds. They heard the word, the information, but they couldn't get the revelation. Because the spirit of their mind was blockaded. And that's why I've told people for years, stop trying to preach to people's natural man. Stop trying to preach to their understanding and start preaching to the spirit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Huh? But see, we keep trying to win them over here. We keep trying to... Con 
We keep trying to convince people here. We keep trying to win them here. We keep trying to operate right here in the natural, and that doesn't get them free. It's when they get the information, that's when it breaks loose as revelation in the spirit of their mind. Somebody say, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Man, there's just so much here. Are y'all with me on this? Is all right? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. This is, this is, whew, I barely got to anything so far. Okay. Verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and been taught by him. Okay. Not just natural spirit. Say so it's the spirit of my mind. As the truth is in Jesus. And what is that truth that comes to you in the spirit of your mind? That you put off. Concerning your formal conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed <laughs> in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Holy. That you can put on the new man, according, that's in the image of God, that's created in true righteousness and holiness, you can actually live righteous and holy. Someone say, I can live righteous and holy. Say it again. Say, I can live righteous and holy. Say it one more time. I can re live righteous and holy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I want to get to... Father, we give you praise. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's go there quickly. Grace. It's multiplied to us through the revelation. Of, of Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we beheld Him. And the Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the one and only begotten of the Father. Jesus is the Word. Every say, Jesus is the Word. Say it again, say, Jesus is the Word. You ready for a bombshell? Jesus, say Jesus is the word. Therefore, Jesus is the law. The law reveals Jesus. The law reveals Jesus. The law is holy, the law is pure, the law is spiritual, the law is good, according to Romans chapter 7, verse 12 and 14. The law reveals Jesus. See, that's why I'm not afraid to go to the Old Testament to discover truth, because it reveals Jesus. I see Jesus all over this thing. You know, when he says that all Scripture was breathed by God, we talked about it last week, right? It was all breathed by God. They didn't have New Testament. It was all the Old Testament. He said it's all good for correction and reproof and conviction of sin. What? What? It's right there. It's supposed to reveal uh, where we are, and it's supposed to reveal who he is. And it reveals, it reveals where we are by revealing to us who he is. Yep. Woo. All right. Where are Our first John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 from the Amplified. Watch this. Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world... Love for the Father is not in him. Oh, jeez. Didn't Jesus say, i got so many things popping at me right now. Didn't Jesus say the whole law is, and, and Paul also said, the whole law is wrapped up in these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And you will have fulfilled, right, the requirements of the law. Sure it is. First four commandments. Don't have any other God before me. Don't make graven images, right? Don't use my, the Lord's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath holy. Love the Lord your God, and you'll fulfill those four. Yeah. 
What are the next six? Children, obey your parents. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Uh, don't, uh, you know, or bear, bear, uh, you know, steal. Don't bear false witness. And, uh, and also don't uh, covet. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you, you'll, you'll, you won't do those things. Yep, come on. Come on, y'all seeing that? Yep. So love does fulfill. If you're operating in a God love, which is to, is to uh, an act, a deliberate act of your will, to act in the best interest of another, irregardless of the consequences to yourself, then you will never fulfill, you will, you will never violate the law. And God gave all of those things to expose his holiness, he, to expose the, op he was saying don't do these things because they're all opposite to love. Yeah, come on, come on. All right, now watch this. So don't love, the, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. It's impossible. It's impossible to love the world and love the Father. It's impossible. Why? Because the world and the flesh, everything that's in the world is contrary to God. In fact, let's go on and read it. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but from the world itself. Verse 17, and the world passes away and disappears with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But he who does the will of God and carries out his purposes in his life abides and remains forever. If you love God, you're not going to love the world. And if you love the world, he's saying, hey, the love of the Father's not in you. Why? How do we know that to be true? Because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. For this is the purpose the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. That, what is that? That is that sin nature, that nature that wants to do its own thing. When you truly get saved, that thing gets killed. Yep. And there's a driving desire on the inside that says, I want to serve God. I want to be like Jesus. And then we begin down the process of transformation through the renovating of our natural mind and our spirit mind by revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. Say it again. Say revelation. revelation. Why revelation? When we start having the revelation, when we start operating in the spirit, in the spirit doesn't mean you're walking around going, ooh, ooh, I feel, I, mm, I, I feel something. That's not being in the spirit. That might be that pepperoni pizza you ate. Being in the Spirit is being directed and dictated by the Holy Spirit, which means you're hearing the voice of God. You're seeing the revelation of God. You're not spending your life trying to figure out all the things you can get away with. You're not trying to figure out and say, well, I don't know. I think God minds this. I don't think God minds that. Your desire is that you be like Christ. God, get everything out of me. Oh, Lord. Let's go back to Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 in the Amplified for a minute. Someone say the revelation of God. So we've got to, got, got, to, got to get under the anointing of revelation that we start getting a hold of this thing. Hmm. Shh. See, Part of a religious spirit, it keeps you from the revelation of the law. It either keeps you so bound to the regulations of the law that you live your life perpetually in such guilt that that drives you, the condemnation drives you away from God. Or it keeps you in such bondage of blinders that you free, feel like you can do anything you want. So that sin in your life, that rebellion in your life causes God, he resists that pride because it's a pride. God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that drives you away from God. No, we humble ourselves before God. We accept the finished work of Christ on the cross. We accept, we by faith tap into that furnished work of Christ in order to tap into the power to finally mortify and put to death the works of flesh in our lives once and for all. Titus chapter 2 verse 1, 
or verse 11 and 12. For the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward, appeared for the deliverance from sin, for the deliverance from sin, for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. Everybody say deliverance from sin. Verse 12, it, that it is talking about the grace. It has trained us to reject, Robert, if you'll come. If you trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness, irreligion, and worldly passionate desires, to live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout, spiritually whole lives in this present world. How? According as his divine promises, right here, his word. Second Peter chapter 1, verse from the Amplified. According to his divine promises, we now have access to the divine nature. We now have access. Oh my gosh. We have access to the divine nature. Can you throw that up? Throw that verse up. By means of these promises, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great word promises. So that through them, through these promises, through everything we've been reading tonight. Through this word. Through this word. Through the revelation of the word. You may escape by flight from the moral decay. The rottenness and corruption that is in the world. Because of covetous lust and greed. And become sharers partakers of the divine nature. Someone say through the word. Wow. Wow. What has God said? I've given you heaven's credit cards that you can purchase all the power you need to overcome all the corruption of this life. You can purchase all the power you need. But you have not because you ask not. And you ask not because nobody told you you needed it. That's why I believe the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A lack of revelation. Not information. We got more information in American churches. But a lack of revelation. A revelation of the true freedom. The, the, what was purchased for us by the blood of Jesus. And that we can walk free. We can walk free. Hallelujah. And that, and that in the process, here's the glorious part, in the process of us learning how to walk free, we walk forgiven. So we don't have to live a life of condemnation. Come on, amen. Because if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. If we sin, we can confess our sins. Repent of him, turn from him. And he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He didn't give us the gospel so we could have a justification to not have to live holy. He came so we could have the power to finally once and again live holy. He came to restore that which was lost. Someone say revelation. Father, I give you praise. I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit for about 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just a little song. I want the ushers to come. We're going to receive the tithes and offerings for tonight if the ushers will come and do that. I want to share with you one more thing. We're a little early. Uh, the youth are still in for a few more minutes, and we're a little bit early. I want, to, I, want to, I want to share with you one more thing. Ushers, go ahead and play, Robert. Just go ahead and prepare your tithes and offerings and just pray. Just stay praying in the spirit. I, I want to I want to give you one more quick thing that I think is going to help you. Shakara ma shakara ma shande. Shiriande ma shakara. Ushers, come on forward. Shakara ma 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 ma. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God. We present to you our.
our tithes and offerings, God. We present to you, God. We present it to you, God. We present it to you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I should go ahead and receive. Shakaraba Shande. Shakaraba 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 Shande. Shande. Regulations of the law. But we are in subject, subjection to Christ, who is the revelation of the law. He is the law. The revelation of the law is the revelation of Christ. Are y'all here? So we're bound to the revelation of the law. So through the law, we need to ask a question. And when I say the law, I'm talking about the entire Old Testament. The whole. I'm talking about, I'm talking about all the word. New Testament, Old Testament. But when you look at the regulations in the law, ask yourself a question. God, what revelation were you trying to bring there? What was there? There's a regulation in the law that says, don't tattoo your body. It's a regulation. Why? What's the deal? Is there a revelation there? I believe. He told him why. He said, don't take on the markings of the heathen or the markings for the dead. You see, I don't, it wasn't just a natural thing. I mean, clearly, don't be publicly identified with those things that are contrary to me. Listen. Y'all should leave and quit this church if I start standing up here wearing a pentagram. Doesn't matter how many times I've anointed it with oil. Doesn't matter if I stick Jesus' name over the top of it. It's still a symbol that symbolizes demonic. Come on, amen. And for me to sit there and say, well, how dare you judge me by what I wear? we're going to judge you by what you wear because you wore what you wore because you wanted to be identified with something. You chose to do it. So there's a principle there. God's saying, hey, be identified with me. Don't be identified with those things that hate me. Come on, man. But now there's another principle. Is it possible? See, in the in the sanitary laws, go so many steps outside your tent, dig a hole, go to the bathroom. In the sanitary laws, they didn't understand germs. They didn't understand bacteria. So God was protecting him, and he told him, if you do these things, I'll keep all these sicknesses and diseases from you. He didn't bother teaching him about germs. He could have. Come on, he could have told him, hey, there's a thing called bacteria. He didn't. He said, no, just don't do this. I'll keep you safe. So there were natural things they didn't understand. He said, don't, don't eat these kind of animals because you know what? You don't know how to cook them properly and clean them properly. It's not good for you. Come on, amen. So he was keeping them safe. Just a little softer than Robert. But then what about there were spirit things they didn't understand? There were spirit things he did, they didn't understand. He told them in the Old Testament, hey, don't let your sons marry their daughters and their, their da your, give your daughters to their sons. He said, because you know what he said? He said, they will teach them to do all the things that are contrary to me. They'll teach them in their idolatrous ways. Why? 
Because the Bible taught us in the New Testament, when a man and a woman come together, they become one spirit. They didn't understand the spirit connection. So is it possible that some of these laws in the Old Testament were trying to also protect them from spirit things? Because there's not only the natural part of their mind, there's the spirit of their mind. So I'm going to keep you away from the things that will pollute the spirit of your mind. So I don't want you to go and hang out around the heathen altars where they worship their demons. I want you to destroy them. I don't want you to sanctify them. I want to destroy them because it's not just a natural thing, but there's spirits that are connected to it. I, I, I got to drop this. I wrote Pastor James, or I was talking to him on the phone. And actually, I texted this to him. And I said, I heard the testimony of a young gang member. And he said, he said, it, it's not natural for someone to want to kill somebody. He said, but all it took for us to do is put on some hardcore rap in our car for 10 minutes. And we were ready to kill our grandmother. He said, he said, we used the spirit that was on that music to allow that murderous spirit to get on us. You know what James wrote me? My son James, because he was huge in the rap. Very, very violent in his drug days. Very violent. And he said, Dad, I never realized until right now. That's exactly what I did. I used rap to get a violent spirit on me so I could attack. Why? Because it was not only a natural thing, there was a spirit thing. That's why some people sit to say, well, I don't listen to the words. It's irrelevant. There's a spirit thing. Because everything is, is natural and spirit. Come on, amen. So is it possible that God was saying, hey, hey, when I tell you to utterly destroy all that stuff in your past, it's not just natural stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to reveal to you something that there's a spirit connection. Don't make covenant with the world. Because he warned them, they will corrupt you to do against my law. Why? Because they're not just going to affect your natural thinking. They're going to affect your spirit. I'll, I'll end with this. I was a baby Christian. Oh, I maybe saved two years. Young Christian on fire for God, wasn't watching any television, hardly any movies, I mean, just nothing. I was staying with my mom one Christmas and kind of bored, so I stuck in Rocky. I like Rocky. Rocky too. I like that one better. And watched the movie, and at the end of the movie, I found myself just all riled up. I'm a gentle guy. I'm not a fighter, especially back then because I was fat. I'm not a fighter, you know. I'm a gentle guy, and I, I mm, whoo, come on, want to get in a fight, yeah, whoo. And I thought to myself, why am I feeling this way? There's, it's more than natural. There's a spirit on that movie that's affecting me. They say. I, it's somewhere between 70, but I believe it's closer to 90% if I remember the stat correctly. Don't hold me on that. But it's a very large percentage of youth crimes are an exact copy of something they saw on a movie, saw in a video game, or heard on a song. Why? Why would they do that? It's not just natural, guys. The spirit that was on that got on them. And then they acted out according to that spirit. So God, when he does all these things, don't do this, don't do that, We've, 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 we, we preachers have told you that's just a bunch of rules and regulations and you're free from that. We forgot, we didn't, we stopped teaching you. No, there's some revelation in there that'll keep you safe. Maybe that's why David said, I'll put no unclean thing before my eyes. Huh? Shh. Moving in the land. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's just sing that right now.